Greetings, outstanding students of ESSU. It is I, Dr. Smith, remotely in your phone or computer or whatever. Uh, but wanted to give you a few uh, brief notes, so I'm going to be doing this over the course of our remote learning days. Um, so just by way of reference, so I'm going to try and keep them to about 15 minutes um, so that it's kind of an easy chunk and you can put some stuff in your notes uh, if you so desire, which I hope you do. Um, so as a reminder, uh, last time in class we are at Roman numeral 6, uh, which is Earth, uh, capital C, Earth's history from the rock record. Um, and we talked about um, dating, so I've, I've taught you about dating, so that's good. We got that taken care of before we had to go remote at school. Um, and I guess remote dating is an interesting thing. Anyway, um, which maybe you guys... No, don't go there, Smith. All right, fine. Um, so at any rate, we are at capital C, Earth's history from the rock record, and we last left... I see... I'm, I'm going to get better at this, not cutting my head off and everything. Um, we last left with a diagram that looked like this, where I was explaining um, divergent plate boundaries, and in fact, all different kinds of plate boundaries. Um, and so we have uh, an example here of the mid-ocean ridge, so the ocean level would be way up at the top. Um, and then there's a divergent boundary here at the middle, where the plates are being pulled apart, and we, we figured out what was going on. Remember, Wegener didn't offer any kind of process, and they thought that the continental crust couldn't move through the oceanic crust because oceanic crust is more dense. It's got basaltic rock, it's got heavier elements, etc. Um, but in fact, both types of lithospheric plates, um, oceanic crust and continental crust, are both moving around as a result of these convection currents, like a pot of boiling spaghetti. Interesting small note, the day that I told you in class, you know how when you boil a pot of spaghetti and it gets on your shirt if you wear a white shirt? I was wearing a white shirt that day, this was not planned, I promise, and we had like noodles at lunch and I actually got spaghetti on my shirt. So anyway, small digression, but Convection currents like a pot of boiling spaghetti underneath, this is in the asthenosphere, remember the sphere of smooshy stuff. And so the asthenosphere is this material that's not liquid, but it's not solid. It's this plastic material that moves around. And so you get these convection currents um, transporting the heat from deep within the Earth up to the higher levels of the Earth's crust. And so these convection currents actually drag the plates along. And this is it's like rock, right? So it's very, you know, a lot of friction. So it's literally dragging the plates apart where they diverge, you get magma coming up and forming new material, and that's why we have this mid-ocean ridge system. And all the way around the world, there are mid-ocean ridges. Um, it is the largest geo geographic and geologic feature on the planet. It's the mid-ocean ridge system. So at any rate, um, when the convection currents are going like this, remember the little bubbles in the demo that we did in class, um, right? The cells go like this. They can't have one going up and one going down because they would, they would, there would be turbulence, it would mix, it would stop. And so they have to be going up together. Likewise, <clears throat> on the other side, they're going down together. So this current is coming down and this current is coming down. And over here what's happening is they're pulling the two plates together. And so that's giving you a convergent boundary. So a convergent boundary is where the two plates are converging. Um, at a divergent boundary, you get mid-ocean ridges or the, the, uh, the Great African Rift Valley is another example of a divergent plate boundary. At a convergent boundary, three different things can happen. And that's where we left off in class. Um, three different things can happen at one of these boundaries where the plates are going together, and it depends on the types of plates. The reason three things can happen is because there are two types of plates. There's or two types of crust, oceanic crust and continental crust. So um, let's take a quick look. I'm just going to uh, erase and uh, draw down here um, what happens at convergent boundaries. And so convergent boundaries, <clears throat> so we have divergent boundaries, um, which is where we get our, our, our mid-ocean ridge or the Great African Rift Valley. Um, there's a transform boundary, um, which means the two plates are just sliding past each other. That's what's happening at the San Andreas Fault in California. Um, and so you basically just get earthquakes and stuff like that, uh, that kind of boundary. And then for a convergent boundary where they're coming together, um, convergent boundary, or boundaries, three different things can happen depending on what kind of crust you have. And so if you have oceanic crust, so I will use oceanic crust will be blue and continental crust will be yellow. And so if you have oceanic crust, if you have oceanic, running into continental crust, so they're both converging, oceanic continental, and if that happens, what you get is you'll have the oceanic going this way, right? So it's moving in this direction. And the continental, that's a convergent boundary, so they're converging. And the continental crust is moving in this direction. 
But remember, the continental crust is lighter, it's less dense. Um, and so the continental crust will tend to ride up on top of the oceanic crust. And so the oceanic crust will end up going down below the continental crust. The continental crust will end up going up above the oceanic crust. Right, so it's going this way. And what happens is you get this oceanic crust doing what is called subducting. And so this gives it subducting is to go underneath. And so this gives you what is called a subduction zone. A subduction zone. And in a subduction zone, um, one of the plates is subducting. Now, as it goes down, it goes down into the, the asthenosphere. So it's very hot, so it gets melted. Um, and so that causes melting uh, on this plate. And so you want to write down, you know, make the sketch in your, in your notes. Oh, by the way, I should have said, you're taking notes on all of these things, but I think you already knew that. Um, as it goes down, it melts. And when it melts, it stirs things up. So there's a lot of tumult and chaos that's going on down there, right? It's changing pressures and temperatures, and the rock is, you know, gr grinding past the other rock. And so what happens is you'll get fissures and breaks, and you end up getting volcanoes occurring um, on the continental part of the crust. So the, the subduction happens, the subduction, the oceanic plate is going underneath the continental crust, and somewhat in from the edge, right, so the ocean is over here on top of the oceanic crust, right, this is not ocean, it's crust. So the ocean is on top of it, and so you'll have a coastline here, and then in from the coastline, you'll get a whole bunch of volcanic mountains. Examples of that include the Cascades in Oregon, Right, so there's an oceanic, you know, this, the Pacific Plate is subducting underneath the North American Plate. Um, and also in South America, uh, the, the Andes along the coast of Chile, um, the same thing is happening. So you get these volcanic uh, mountains forming because everything is getting all, you know, ground up and jumbled and there are cracks and the magma pushes up through the cracks as it's melting and you end up getting these volcanoes up on the surface. So that is um, a convergent boundary of oceanic and continental crust and it forms what is called a subduction zone. Um, the other two possibilities are oceanic, oceanic, and continental, continental. Um, let's go with continental, continental first. So continental, continental um, is continental, continental. I'm just going to abbreviate it thus. Continental, continental, the two plates are going toward each other, right? So a continental plate going this way and a continental plate going this way. And so they're going toward each other. They're both light, and so they tend to get lifted up. So a continental continental is an uplifting process. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, they're both, and so they go up, and so you end up getting folded mountains. So you get a subduction zone with volcanic mountains at a con oceanic continental boundary, but a continental continental boundary, you get um, folded mountains. And an example of this is the Himalayan mountains. So the Himalayan mountains are folded mountains where you have two crustal plates running into each other. They're both continental crust, and they lift up. And you can actually, over time, we now have the technology that you can actually see that happening. You can actually, we, you know, with radio telescopes, it turns out. Uh, I'll explain how at some point later, I hope. Um, but we can actually measure very precisely the movement of the Earth's crust, and so we can actually see these things moving, and we actually can now measure with satellites very precisely the altitudes, and so you actually can see this happening, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's continental, continental. The remaining type of boundary is oceanic, oceanic. And so an oceanic, oceanic boundary, um, this is oceanic, oceanic. Again, the oceanic crust is more dense. Uh, it's made out of the heavier elements, whereas the continental is the lighter elements, silica, oxygen, and so on. Um, and so if continental, or sorry, oceanic, oceanic running together, and for an oceanic, oceanic type crust, oceanic is going this way, Oceanic is going that way. They run into each other, and what happens is, since they are more dense, they actually will tend to move downward, and so they'll both go downward. Now, eventually, one will subduct under the other, so that does happen, and you get things called island arcs, um, and, and these will eventually, the same thing happens. One will eventually subduct under the other one. Um, they're, they're just depending on the slight differences in density and the weakness of the crust and things like that. Um, but the oceanic oceanic will go downward, and what happens there is that you get right these two oceans. You're at the, remember, the, the, ocean is at the ocean level is up here. This is the crust at the bottom. And what happens is you end up getting these areas, um, which are deep ocean trenches. So deep ocean trenches like the Marianas Trench. Um, in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so those are the three possibilities um, for convergent boundaries. Remember, there are three different types of plate boundaries. They are 
transform, just going side by side, divergent, meaning they're moving apart from each other, and convergent, meaning they're moving together. So three different types of plate boundaries, but also within those, three different types of convergent boundaries. The type of convergent boundary depends on the crust. You either get oceanic continental, where one goes under the other, or you get continental continental, they're both light, they both go upward. Or you get oceanic oceanic, they're both dense, they go downward. All right, so that is uh, Earth's history from the rock record. Um, we're going to move on now um, with some expedience uh, to the next big thing, um, which is capital D. So capital C is Earth's history from the rock record. We're talking about Earth. We're going to move on to capital D, which is our water planet. So capital D... I can just move along because you can pause the video so I don't have to worry about erasing notes. They are quite nice. I should have taken pictures, but oh yeah, I'm taking video, no problem. All right, so capital D is our ocean planet. Capital D. Oh, did I say that? Our water planet, my bad. Our water planet. So it's kind of a misnamed planet because water covers... 70%-ish of the Earth's surface. Um, yeah, we call it Earth. Anyway, um, so our water planet. Um, first off, um, I want to talk about the global ocean. So number one, global ocean. Global ocean features. And when I talk about the global ocean, it turns out that the oceans are all interconnected. Now, I, you all knew that. Um, so we have primary basins, and so when we talk about this, we'll talk about basins, ocean basins, and the ocean basins that you probably are familiar with are the Pacific Basin, the Atlantic Basin, the Arctic Basin, the Arctic Ocean Basin, the Indian Ocean Basin, and the Southern Ocean Basin, which you may not be as familiar with. But basically it's all the water, which has a, a very particular flow, and you saw that in the Earth from Space video, um, around the, the pole. And so the Southern Ocean Basin down below the southern tip of, uh, of Africa and South America. Um, so these are ocean basins. Um, and we talk about uh, mean sea level. So because they're all interconnected, we have something that we call mean sea level. Now this, of course, is affected. We have to measure with techniques to measure it, and the NOSB folks will talk in more detail about it because there's, uh, there's high water and low water, um, and there are ways that we, we benchmark the tidal levels. But in general, people talk about mean sea level, which is an average sea level across the entire planet. And we use that as a reference for altitudes and depths around the ocean, around the planet. Um, so global ocean um, features um, are based on the surface, right? So these are based on the surface. That is to say what we have seen for you know hundreds of years uh, as the, the, the oceans have been mapped by explorers, right? So here is a coastline. We're not seeing what's underneath it. Um, but we're just seeing the, the coastline itself. And so we talk about features being, you know, these are things that we see big picture as we are looking at it from the surface, not knowing anything about what's going on underneath the ocean. Um, so uh, there are some uh, um, features on the ocean floor uh, that I want to make a little sketch of here. Uh, and so I'm going to make a quick sketch, and then we'll be done for today because I'm coming up on my 15-minute limit here. And so number two is features of the ocean floor, which we had to, had to go deep in the ocean to find out. So we didn't find those out from our early explorers. Uh, but as we started going deeper and diving and doing soundings and stuff like that, which we'll talk about in number three, um, next lecture. Oops, sorry, this is number two. I said the number three. Um, I want to know, I want you to have an idea of general features of the ocean floor. So features, and this will be a sketch and you'll want about a third a third to a half of a nurdle page for this. Features of the ocean floor. Um, and it's just going to be a sketch, and we'll talk a little more about it later on. Um, so the, the surface of the ocean, right, so the surface is up here. 
Okay, so there's the surface of the ocean. And then as we come out from land, so the land is coming out here. So we should make that a different color. white. So, so there's the beach, right? So the beach is where the, the um, water intersects with the land. So there's the beach, and it comes out like this, and it's fairly slow, very shallow of slope here. Right, so there's the beach right there. We talk about the littoral zone and tidal, intertidal zone and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then as we go out, it, eventually you get to a place where it drops off rather rapidly. Uh, and Nemo fans will say, oh, the drop off. Um, so it goes out like this. This is called the continental, continent, that says continental, trust me, continental shelf. That's the part with a very shallow slope as you go out. Um, and then when it drops off very steeply, and this is not to scale, because it's CSSU, what are you going to do, right? Um, so this is close to the top, and then this drops, this would drop way, way down, like lower than I could put in like the floor here. Um, but as it drops off, this part is called the continental slope. The continental slope. So the continental shelf, and then the continental slope. And again, I, I'm slightly exaggerating. It doesn't get that steep, but it, but it seems very steep in comparison to the continental shelf. And so uh, you wouldn't be able, I don't have enough scale to show you how it really goes. But at any rate, it starts dropping off much more rapidly. Um, you get a continental slope, and then you get down to the bottom, and we have what we call the abyssal plane. And the abyssal plane, whoopsies, sorry, I need to adjust this. I thought I had the phone set. To, ah, sorry, all is well. At least the phone didn't come crashing down, so that's good. Okay, we're working on it. Okay, sorry. Um, so this is called the abyssal plane. And interestingly enough, when uh, along a continental uh, shelf, you have currents that flow, and you get a bunch of stuff that falls down the slope. And that stuff builds up in the bottom, so you get a buildup of, like, you know, just kind of very silty, not densely packed material uh, on the edge. That is called the continental rise. So the continental shelf, the continental slope, and the continental rise is that stuff that is built up um, on the edge there. Interesting from the perspective of submarines, because say a submarine's going along here and you've got sonar going and you're getting echoes, right? You get an echo off of the slope because it's like rocky or whatever. This is all very material, uh, and so this loosely packed material doesn't give you an echo back. It just looks like you know the water keeps going and going, and so it's entirely possible that submarines might run into stuff, uh, and there have been some incidents uh, where, where that has been uh, a factor in submarine issues, submarine accidents. So at any rate, continental shelf, continental slope, continental rise, the abyssal plane, and then there are a couple items. We will sometimes get a seamount, um, which will come up off the bottom, um, volcanic activity in the bottom of the ocean, or mid-ocean ridge, or the like. And so we'll get something called a seamount, which will come up like this. Right. That's a seamount. Seamount. And then sometimes you will have something that goes up to the top, and you get just a little flat area right there under the surface. Comes back down. And that is called a geo. G U Y O T. Geo. And that is um, because what's happened is the, the surface erosion has worn away what once was sticking up above the, the ocean surface. Um, and I should, I'm off the edge of the, the video here, so I'm going to stick it in over here. You will sometimes also get. Anyone? Anyone? It's going downward. It's caused by oceanic oceanic crust at a converging boundary. Yes, this is a um, deep ocean trench. So label it on yours. I think that it's off the screen. I'll try and show you again. Deep ocean trench going down. It's like a periscope on a cell phone. It's nice to be in a household where we have a lot of music stands. Anyway, um, deep ocean trench there. So continental shelf, continental slope, continental rise, abyssal plain, deep ocean trench, seamount, and geo. Um, I do want you also to know the average depth of the abyssal plain, which is about the same all across the oceans. So the abyssal plain is about 3.9. Um, kilometers, and we can just say 3 to 4 kilometers. If you want to remember 3.9, that's great. 
but it varies across the ocean. So about three to about four kilometers with an average of about three point. What's the exact average, Alan? Um, for what? Oh, 3,686. Come on. 3,686 meters, he says, is the average ocean depth. And that was from a yeah. recent uh, study that was just uh, just completed by, by NOAA, the National Oceanographic Thick and Atmospheric Administration. All right, More that's it. I have gone over by five minutes and 15 seconds. Nothing unusual for me. Sorry. Um, I will see you next time.